right guys a little bit different video here i am in the shop today uh this is the only place i can do the filming for right now so it's not my typical way of doing things but i need to do this video so uh this one is entitled reading uh bucks antlers they can tell you a lot even while they're still connected on the head if you can look at them close enough they can tell you a lot about the deer itself, what conditions it may have grown up in or may have fed in during the summer. So I've got two examples here that I'm going to use. This is a buck that I shot off the farm oh, a couple of years ago. Uh, there is <clears throat> a condition that this buck grew up in. And when I do kill a deer, I will do an additional video to this. But uh, during the summer, we had a really, really bad drought. I'll take it back. I think this is three years ago. Uh, we had a bad drought, so I couldn't get my summer crop to hardly do anything. The deer kind of suffered for it, not just at my place, but in the region. So this deer is actually reflecting... Uh, the poor conditions that it had to grow up in. So right off the bat, these antlers are smaller than what they should have been. So this is what I kind of pay attention to. I, I call all these little bumps right here nodulars. That's probably not the real name, but that's what I call them because it reminds me of bacteria nodes on roots. So the more of them you have, the better it is, right? Same thing applies to deer antlers. A deer in poor uh, nutrition settings, such as drought itself or poor soil, tends to grow a really smooth rack. Now, I don't count uh, areas where deer have rubbed the rack smooth, because at one point you can tell there was probably some nodulars there, but not many. Now, if I flip this deer over on the back, you can see some of them there. There's really not a lot. So all those little bumps indicate the deer had some nutrition. Uh, the rack, for my purposes, if a deer's two and a half years old and this is all he's got, uh, he's, he's behind by my standards. Now, this may not be how you treat it, but this is how I treat it. This deer is way behind. His antlers reflect that because there is just absolutely nothing here. It is smooth as it can be. So this is a very strong indication that this deer probably had a more difficult time in spring and summer. And if if I when I start doing these videos after I've killed a deer, this deer actually had a very high parasite rate. I'm talking like ticks and lice. So it has affected his antler. Now on this particular deer, and by the way, both of these are the same age. So you can see potential looks a lot better with this one. So this deer is reflecting better nutrition. So the year that my, this is my dad's very last buck. Um, the year he shot this when we had excessive rainfall all summer long, there was a couple spots here and there to where we didn't have rain for about a week or two, but that was generally in May and very early in June. After that, the faucet didn't turn off. So this deer had the luxury of having better plants in general, just because of all the rainfall we got. So he is reflecting much better nutrition. There are way more nodulars on these antlers. So the higher the nutritional level is, the more this deer expresses though. See, these are running up the beam here. Uh, if you've noticed on uh, hunting shows or where people go to hunt trophy deer, you will notice that uh, nodulars will be uh, even all the way up into these points. And they could look a lot bigger and mo more well-defined than what this is. These are small-time uh, nodulars. That 
you know, at one point it may become an actual point if the deer had lived another year, but you could see bucks with nodulars or stickers like that all over his bases when you start getting better nutrition. So this is something I like to focus on. And uh, it's kind of, as you're watching these bucks grow, especially for those of you that can get some good trail camera shots, uh, later in the season when the rack is nearly done growing, you will see these sticking through up or sticking out of the velvet or forcing the velvet up. It'll look really rough and bumpy. And the more of them you see, the better your nutrition plan's getting. So I think that's a really simple and cool way to try to read what your deer are going through. And I knew what this one went through and this one. If I had been somewhere else and it's not my property, never been there before, I can at least try to use this type of guideline, smooth versus bumpy, to determine what kind of nutrition is possible in the area I'm hunting. And if you keep seeing a bunch of smooth rack deer, um, your odds are a little bit further down the chain as far as trying to get a really, really nice deer. So the more of these I see in deer, especially even young deer, the happier I am. So this deer was two and a half years old. This deer was two and a half years old. And you can literally see the difference between the deer. Now, some of that is genetics. I'm not completely ruling genetics out how these antlers look, but this deer was at a major disadvantage and at least could have grown a much better looking seventh point there or possibly uh, added a few more inches to his tines here where this deer is probably expressing a pretty decent uh, portion of his two and a half year old frame here. So there you go, guys. Uh, kind of a different video. I will expand more on these later on. Have a good one.